Hi guys, Simply Shauna here. And if you clicked on this video, you probably are interested in hearing about running an effective ad strategy on your Etsy shop. And so was I. I was curious about the same thing. So I ran some experiments and I can't wait to share the results with you. In this video, I am going to share my results with you. I'm going to share snapshots from my Etsy ads and you're going to get to see how I did when I first started a few weeks in and then a little further in when I started to implement the strategies I'm going to share with you. There are a couple of strategies I was using to make them effective and to make them profitable. This video is the second video in a three-part series. I made $27,000 profit in November. And I'm sharing the three things that I feel really helps me to have a fantastic Q4. The entire Q4 was about $60,000 profit. That's October, November, and December, the most profitable time that you could be selling online. If you missed the video that came before this one, it was all about the listing strategy used. And I'll go ahead and link it up above, and I'll also link it down below in the description so you can quickly find it if you wanna go find out more about that. The next video coming up after this one is going to be all about the momentum, uh, the concept of building on momentum in your shop. You're definitely not going to want to miss that one. I saved the best for last. But this video is all about the ad strategy, which was a really important part of the whole picture of how I got so much profit in just one month. Before we get started, I just want to remind you that everything I'm sharing is absolutely repeatable. You could do this also. You can build the same business and there's lots of information online to help you do that. I started as a complete beginner with absolutely zero knowledge of how to run an Etsy shop or connect it with a print on demand company, a company that prints your items for you that you've designed and ships them to the customer. I had no idea about any of these things. All I did was listen to YouTube for 20 to 30 minutes every day to people who were sharing with me what their numbers were. So I was excited, like, oh my gosh, they made that much in that many months? Sign me up. How can I do this too? And they shared what their strategies were. So I just followed their advice. And this is where I am now quitting my teaching job, making double, working from home with my dog Tucker on my lap half the day. Okay, before we jump into the numbers, my stats, so you can see if you think they're as worth it as I do, you can look at the numbers yourself and make that determination. And before I then jump into the strategies that made it all possible for me, let me go ahead and just set the expectations because I did not really truly understand what I should be expecting from Etsy ads until a couple of months ago. Um, and I, and just a shout out real quick to Cassie Johnson because I joined a mentorship group with her and that's where I really got some knowledge under my belt about running effective Etsy ads. When you're running Etsy ads, what's really happening is you wind up putting two versions of your listing out there. A customer can potentially see your listing twice because as they're scrolling, they might see your listing that has the ad on it, and then they might also see your organic listing. And each time a customer is interacting with either of these listings, the version of it that's the ad, or it's organic version, that listing is having some love given to it in the algorithm, and it's getting healthier and healthier each time it's being interacted with. So, Anytime someone's interacting with the ad version of it, you're paying for that. And because you're paying for the clicks on the ad, the idea is that more people are actually going to see the organic version of it also. With our Etsy ads, we get a lot of data and we can see exactly how much we're spending each day. We can see exactly what is being clicked on, what is costing us money, what is being clicked on and purchased and making us money. And so we're really able to kind of get a good idea of if our ads are profitable or breaking even or losing us money. What we can't really measure through the information that we're getting with our Etsy ads is how many more times customers are seeing the organic version 
of those listings and we're making money off of the orga organic versions of those listings because they have a healthier overall quality score. Each listing, Etsy is attaching a quality score. We don't get to see it. We don't know what it is, but the listings are getting quality scores and that's Etsy's algorithm at work helping to give it that quality score so that Etsy knows what listings are performing well and which ones to put in front of people. Let's jump into the numbers. I'm gonna put some on the screen for you. All right, just so you know, I started $100 a day, and then in October, cranked it up to $200 a day, and then cranked it up to $300 a day in November. I'm currently at $100 a day. I'm also doing this on 300 to 400 listings. This is not the advice I would give myself one year ago, Shauna, especially not two years ago, Shauna. So if I were to go back and advise myself at this, the places that I was in two years ago or one year ago, two years ago I would have said, okay, let's do $3 a day and 20 listings and see if we can apply the strategies we're going to go over in this video, make sure you're profitable or breaking even, and then bump it up. One year ago I was having some good business coming through, was making a couple thousand dollars a month, so I probably would have suggested to myself one year ago, hey, why don't you do $10 a day or $20 a day on maybe 20 listings or 30 listings and move from there. Here we have the numbers on the screen and you'll see on the side, I put in red or green, there's only red on this, on this slide, this is the first four weeks of data, what I lost or what I made. Now, I know from running my, my business the last two years that I make about 28% of whatever the revenue is that's coming through the shop. So usually that's a pretty good barometer for me to compare it to. And that's what I use to figure these numbers out, 28% of the revenue. And then I subtracted what I was spending on Etsy ads to see what was happening with the profit on the the sales that were happening through the Etsy ads. I'm going to explain that just a bit better so you really understand how to figure out if your Etsy ads are being profitable. Let's take a closer look at the top bar up there where I'm giving you the information about that top week up there. And I circled the revenue there for you, $687.01. To find out if my Etsy ads were profitable during that time frame of August 29th through September 6th, I'm going to take that revenue that was earned during that week from the sales that were coming from the ads and I'm going to multiply it with 28%. Now I encourage you to go figure out what percentage of your revenue is profit. From running my shop over the last two years and just paying attention to this, I have figured out it's 28%. You're probably somewhere between 25 and 30% depending on where you have your shirts priced. I take the $687 revenue, I multiply it by 28% that, since that's the percentage of revenue that's usually profit money in my pocket, I get 192.36. So that means that if I had not been spending money on ads, I would have made about $192 from these sales after I paid Printful, I would have had $192 in my pocket. But on these particular sales, I only made these sales because I had ads on them. And I had to spend money to run those ads. And we see here, I spent $199.99. So I'm going to now take the $192 that would have been my profit from these particular orders that were on ads, and I'm going to subtract 199.99 from that. And that leaves me with about negative $7. In total for the first four weeks, I was down $703. And at this point, I'm like, okay, Shona, you gotta get this figured out. We gotta, we gotta rein it in a little bit and figure it out, or we gotta cut the Etsy ads. We can't be wasting all of this money. And fast forward a couple of weeks, I finally start to get a handle on the strategies that I'm about to share with you. And it could not be more clear to me that they were working for me. 
And you'll see here I made $34, lost three, and then made $410 as I started to figure this out. This is by week again. And then the following week got even better for these three weeks. It was a total of $2,054 extra dollars. In addition to what I was already, you know, what I was making, it was an extra $2,054 in just those three weeks during, you know, that Q4 period of time. We've got a lot of sales coming through. If you've done everything you need to do throughout the year. I just wanted to take a second and pause the video. As I'm editing, I just want to make sure I explain this clearly. So let's take the, the week there where I made $902. That $902 means that is what I made profit on my ads. That is after accounting for the money that I spent on the ads, after taking into account what I needed to pay Printful, that is the profit it, at the end of the day after those 124 orders that I get to keep that's profit in my pocket. The total profit that week was just over $9,000, which was the best week I have ever had and was obviously the best week of 2022. So the organic listings made me around $8,000 profit and the listings on ads made me almost $1,000 on profit. And then the following week, a lot of the Christmas sales had been drying up because you can only guarantee Christmas delivery until about December 12th. So as we move away from December 12th, you'll see I'm still in the green. The Etsy ads are still not costing me anything. They're still making me some money, but not as much because overall, not nearly as many sales were coming through the shop. Now you know the basic concepts behind Etsy ads that I was kind of working under the knowledge of, is, which is that your Etsy ad helps that listing grow in the algorithm a bit faster, improving the overall health of the entire listing, improving the overall health of the terms that you are ranking for within that listing, and then also in turn, improving the overall health of your store and where it's ranking. I also shared those numbers with you just to give you a basic idea and maybe so you could be as excited as I was when I saw the change in really not doing much with the Etsy ads other than running them and trying to implement the strategies that I'm about to share with you, at least some of them every three or four days. And then how I changed it, what I was doing and how often I was implementing the strategies and how quickly that turned the Etsy ads being profitable around for me. Ad strategy one is simply to start small. Don't go in there and start to put a lot of money down without practicing these strategies and making sure that you've got a grip on them so that your ad campaign doesn't get out of control. If you have a little more disposable income than I did at the time, then maybe for you that looks like $5 or $10 a day or even $20 a day. But wherever you're at, start where you're comfortable. And I just wanna say I grew my business without using Etsy ads. I only started really using Etsy ads recently. So you can do this without running Etsy ads. However, if I were to open a new shop and I would be trying to get it going faster, I would be dabbling with the Etsy ads and I would start small, make sure that they're profitable in my shop. And then I would use the strategies, the next few strategies we're about to talk about and grow them from there. Strategy two, check on your ads often. So remember in the beginning of this video, I showed you my stats and I showed you really red numbers, all of those red numbers where I was losing money and then all of a sudden I was making money and I was in the green. This is one of the first things I changed. It's really the next two things that, I, that are on our list that I changed. First being, I was checking on them much more often. At first, I, when I was in the red, I was only checking on my Etsy ads once every three to five days maybe. And then I started checking on them every day. And then it was like twice a day. So now I check on them twice a day. I check on them in the morning and I check on them in the evening. I'll show you real quick how to get to the Etsy ads. And then I'll show you what I'm looking for when I'm there. Right now I'm probably spending about 20 minutes in the morning and about 20 minutes in the evening, checking in on them and making sure they're not getting out of control. When you get into Etsy, you'll find on the left-hand side a little tab that says marketing. 
you'll want to click on that and then you'll want to click on a little tab that says Etsy ads. You'll be able to see a nice graph that shows you how many orders you have, how much revenue you've had from your Etsy ads, what your spend has been on the Etsy ads. Next, you'll want to look in that peach bar. You'll see an option to click on manage advertise listings. And then you've got some different filters you can apply to what you're looking for. So when I go in in the morning, I usually want to filter by yesterday. I'd like to see what was happening yesterday. And then I also want to see what was happening so far that day. So I usually will filter by today also. Uh, sometimes I also filter by the week or the month just to get an overall overview look at what's going on. And there in pink, I would click on that bar that says listing status. I highlighted it in pink. It won't be in pink when you look in your Etsy shop. But your listing status there, I always go to advertised. That way you're not having all of these unadvertised listings mixed in. It just makes it a lot easier to find what you're looking for. Now you'll be on a screen that looks something like this. Over to the left, I have it cut off because it shows all my designs. But over to the left, you would have uh, all your listings there, a little picture of your listing so you know exactly which listing it is. And then I have spend highlighted right now. I like to click on the word spend at the top and it can put all of your listings in order for you uh, for the ones that are costing you the most money. So when I did this the other day and, and took a screenshot of what I was gonna share with you, I had it ranked for just today, that day. So that first item up there had cost me $7.22 that day. That's how much of my ads budget it had spent promoting that listing. The revenue was $22.82. I'm looking at, looking at that over the left. So it, and then the next item there was $3.78. And I hadn't sold any of that because I see the revenue is $0 next to it. So that was um, a pure loss there on those. So the items that are costing me the most money I'm going to click on those and I'm going to look at the search terms that are being shown for them. We're going to do a much deeper dive of what I'm looking for when I'm clicking on those and looking at those search terms, but that's going to be the next strategy. So the other thing that I'm going to do here after I've done, after I'm done clicking through some of the listings that are costing me the most money and, and kind of just cleaning them up. After I, I do that with my spend, I'm going to go over and do that now with my ROAS. ROAS stands for return on ad spend. So you'll see like that top one says 3.16. I really like to see the number three and higher there. The higher the number, that means the less you spent for ads, but the more money you made. So you can see in this bottom one here, I spent $1.65 at the very bottom of the screen there. And for that $1.65, someone clicked in to that listing and bought $83 worth of items, which sent my ROAS really high. Now, when your items have a really high ROAS, I like to make sure I'm on top of those as well. That means they did well, right? But Etsy is like, oh, yippee, this listing did well. Let's open up the search terms and let's put it in front of more people with more broad search terms. And you might be thinking, oh, that's great. It's going to get in front of more people. I do not want to pay for it to be in front of someone unless that person is typing something into the search bar that is really quite specific in directing them toward that listing. It really has to describe that listing. And really quickly, before we jump into what we're looking for when we open these listings, I have the ROAS column highlighted here, and you can kind of see just some of the listings here that have the highest ROASes. So now I'm gonna go in and just make sure that I'm taking care of those as well. I spend more time in the spend column especially if I'm not as profitable as I want to be. I'll go through, you know, more and more of those listings. Also, you can see over to the right-hand side, there's a tab there where you can turn this ad on or off. 
So if it's just not being profitable, it's losing you too much money, you can turn it off. Before I turn it off, I go and clean them up. So let me show you how I do that. This is the most important part of this video. And we're gonna take a deep dive now into exactly what we're looking for. On our list here, it's the third thing, and it says be specific, and we're going to put Etsy to work for us. It's our ad money, and we wanna make sure it's being spent really well. Etsy does want you to make a sale. They make money when you make money. But it's all an algorithm, and when the listing is getting clicked on and doing well, they're gonna put it in front of more people, and that can lead to more and more search terms being opened for that listing, and sometimes those search terms become very, very broad, like the word t-shirt. I don't want to pay to have any of my items in front of someone that just wrote t-shirt, because they're very, very unlikely to actually buy your item. It might catch their interest, they might click on it and spend your ad budget. There's research that shows that many shoppers will do two searches before they're ready to make a purchase. So they might first start with gift for mom. They'll see a bunch of ideas. They're gonna see candles, they're gonna see totes, they're gonna see shirts, they're gonna see all kinds of blankets, they're gonna see all kinds of stuff. Then they'll narrow it down and you know they'll see these ideas and then they'll be like, oh, you know, I really want a, a mom candle that has a funny phrase on it. So then their next search term will be much more specific. And as their search terms get more specific, they're more likely to make that purchase. So we want to kind of keep that in mind when we are choosing which search terms to allow to stay on and which ones we want to turn off for our listings. We're going to use this design as our example. So let's pretend that this is in our shop and it's costing us some money. This, this listing is costing us some money. So we're going to go in and we're going to clean up the search terms that our Etsy has turned on for it. The teacher in me is going to be kicking in right now and I haven't had the opportunity to make a thinking map or a flow chart for kids in a while so I made one for this example. So I think of it like this in my mind. I've got the three empty boxes here and we're going to fill those empty boxes in with the th concepts we want to see represented within each of the search terms we're going to leave on for that listing. So in our example, we have a St. Patrick's Day dentist shirt. So we want to see all three of those concepts represented. Now we're looking at an example of what you'll see when you open your listing. Here on the left, we're looking at these little tabs, these little toggle switches, and we are either going to leave it checked, so we're keeping it on, or we're going to switch it to off, and then we'll see a little X for the relevant keyword. Now, now over to the right is where I wrote the keywords. So we're going to pretend that we opened that listing with the dental shirt, right? Uh, the dental shirt that's St. Patrick's Day themed. And we're going to go through each of the search terms that are popping up for it. So at the top here, we've got dental St. Patrick's shirt. That hits all three of the, the concepts we have in our boxes above, so that sounds good. Dental assistant gifts. No, we don't want that. It's not good enough. It hits dentist, it doesn't hit shirt, and it doesn't hit St. Patrick's Day. Dental St. Patrick's. Not good enough. Which one is it missing? It doesn't say anything about a clothing item, so I don't want to leave that on. Dental hygienist St. Patrick's shirt. I'll leave that one on. Dental St. Patrick's Day SVG. I do not want that one. That has nothing to do with clothing and a person that's likely putting SVG in the search bar is not looking to buy a shirt. They're looking to probably make their own. St. Patrick's Day shirt. Nope. It doesn't say anything about a dentist. I would turn that one off. At the very bottom, we see dental shirts. And do you think I would turn that on or off? I would normally turn that off since it doesn't say anything about St. Patrick's Day. Of course, to every rule, there's always some ex exceptions, some rule breakers. And there is an exception here. I made some exceptions when turning off the key terms. So for example, with a, the example our, of our dental shirt that's St. Patrick's Day themed, if we're like 30 days before St. Patrick's Day, 40 days before St. Patrick's Day, I might leave dental shirts on because I'm thinking that most people that are 
working at a dentist office and putting dental shirts in the search bar at that time, might be looking for a shirt for St. Patrick's Day. It's pretty likely, I'm, I'm thinking. But my listing would have to, or that ad would have to be profitable. If I'm losing money on that ad, then I need to turn that off because next step is I'm turning the whole ad off. So I, I need to clean that ad up and I would take that out. Um, it doesn't have the high order badge. So sometimes one of these broad terms will sneak in there and I haven't checked that listing out because it, it wasn't losing me any money and it wasn't really high with the ROAS and all of a sudden it sneaks in there and I open it up and I see one of these broad terms that would normally turn off like dentist shirts, but it's got a high click rate and there, Etsy's letting me know it's got a high order rate. In that case, of course, I would leave it on. People are clicking on it and they're, they're buying it. So there are exceptions. You just have to use your best judgment. And that brings me to the last thing that I was doing in order to get the results that I got. And that was my selection in which listings I was putting on ads. So there were a couple things I was doing. I was choosing items that had larger profit margins in them. So sweatshirts I was putting on ads, couples shirts, and group listings since you're often selling more than one shirt in those types of listings. So I made sure a lot of those types of listings were the ones that were on ads. And something else I wasn't doing on purpose but realized it was really working to my advantage, so I wanted to just share it, was that you know, at this point, I've been designing and listing things in my shop for two years, and that's given me a chance to really build up certain niches that I design in regularly. And what I found was that sometimes people would click into a listing and not purchase from that listing. What Etsy will do is show other items that are like it in your shop to that potential customer. And so if the customer wasn't quite sold on the listing they clicked on, you have a chance to better close that deal because now they're seeing other items in your shop that are related to that niche, related to that topic that they're already interested in, and now they're more likely to purchase from you instead of clicking out and looking at all of the items Etsy has to offer from all of the various sellers. Two quick things that didn't really make the list uh, but are worth mentioning are I definitely put all the listings for the upcoming holiday. So all my Valentine's Day stuff right now is on ads. I'll probably put the St. Patrick's Day. Well, actually, this, any St. Patrick's Day stuff I'm listing right now is also on ads. And any listings that have done well for me in the past are also on ads. Now, with that said, there have been a couple of those listings that have done well for me organically, but for some reason aren't doing as well on ads, which... I was not expecting, but I just went ahead and turned those off. I sell from them anyways. Uh, but I think it's really solid advice to definitely put those things on ads. One more thing to be mindful of, something I noticed that was happening in my shop, if you do have a listing that is not converting, so it's getting a lot of clicks, it's spending your, your ad money, definitely go in and check out those terms, but also go into the actual listing and make sure you didn't make a silly error. Like I noticed in one of my listings that I was fixing this week, I had dupe, I list by duplicating in Etsy and I had duplicated a listing and didn't change the variations for some phrases that I was offering. So it didn't make any sense when someone clicked on this listing, it was for phrases that belonged to different listing photos to an altogether different listing and they could not select the phrases for the shirts that were in these photos. So of course no one was purchasing that. They were opening it and like probably frustrated that they that they weren't able to purchase something. So just go into your, your listing, make sure you didn't make any silly mistakes. If you offer personalization but forgot to toggle the personalization switch over in that listing, go ahead and fix that. Check your variations, make sure you've got your shirt, your shirt sizes there and that everything's looking right. To recap, I'm really happy with my ads strategy. I'm really pleased with the idea of making a couple extra thousand dollars that I would not have made had I not been running the ads. I also believe that the organic version of all of these listings are getting bumped up in the algorithm as well because of the interaction they're getting from the ads. 
and the overall health of my shop is improving as a result of all that. So I'm super happy with it. To recap, in order to get these results, I do have to check in on my ads and I am spending around 30 to 40 minutes every day on that. So I'm spending 15, 20 minutes in the morning and 15, 20 minutes in the evening. If things are a little backwards, I'm spending more time or I'm turning things off. When in doubt, turn that key term off. If you're having to wonder, oh, is this specific enough? Then that means turn it off. I'm not done learning and trying things out with ads, so I will continue to share my results with you and I'll try to be as specific as I can and as transparent as I can so that you can apply them effectively to your shops. I do hope you found value from this video. I enjoyed filming it for you. If you did find value, I'd love for you to smash the like button. That would help me so much. If I didn't answer a question that you have about ads, you can go ahead and ask it in the comments. Or if you have another idea about something you think I could make a video about that you want to know more about as you are going through your journey on Etsy, please go ahead and let me know in the comments. I'll be reading all of them and you could definitely influence a future video. If you're still here, thank you so much for staying and you must be waiting for that tip from Tucker. Tucker, take it away.